Welcome back to the garage. Got to pull the cars out and set this up for episode three. Stay tuned. Welcome, welcome. Episode three in the garage with Dom the DP. Welcome back. 82 subscribers, I think. So slowly climbing. Thanks for for subscribing and tuning in. So I'm shooting with all Sony cameras today, with exception to the GoPro over there. But I'm essentially testing this out. Uh, I got a new uh, mirrorless camera yesterday at a local camera shop. And so I'm testing S-Log3 on the a7 III. And of course, I'm also shooting S-Log3 on my FS7 Mark II back there. I don't have my cool zoom control because I'm shooting on all prime lenses. So on the FS7 Mark II, I have an 85 millimeter 1.4 G Master lens and I have a 24 millimeter 1.4 G Master lens on this camera. So yeah, that, I'm just mixing things up with the cameras. I'm giving a mirror of the day off um, and we're going to go all Sony today. And I've got some different color schemes going on here. The color scheme kind of foreshadows what I want to talk about today. I've gotten a couple questions about storytelling and interview lighting setups. Um, and so I wanted to use this episode three to kind of dive deep into one of my recent projects. Uh, a little video I made uh, highlighting NBA superstar Paul George um, and his Jersey retirement at Fresno State. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I work at Fresno State full time, but it's just in my house now. I do on occasion still need to shoot things on campus, so uh, I do go back uh, maybe once or twice a week. You can find this Paul George video along with a written story and kind of a photo essay about Paul George on stories.fresnostate.edu. I'll put it, yeah stories.fresnostate.edu. That's very awkward. In this episode, I'm just gonna kinda dive into two things. I'm gonna dive into the gear that I used to produce this uh, video on Paul George. I'm also gonna go into why I chose to set up the interview um, and light it in a certain way. Days before I went and scouted the Save Mart Center, I needed to find a location that was quiet. I needed to find a location that I can control the light. Um, and that was big enough to accommodate all of this gear. And so this is the space that I got to use. As I flip to the next picture, this is um, the setup. I pre-lit this interview. It's not every day that you get to pre-light an interview, and I did this the day before. This gives me a ton of time to tweak all the lights, make sure it's perfect. My thinking behind this lighting setup is that anytime a big alum or professional sports star comes back to campus. You know, if Derek Carr, David Carr, Trent Dilfer, uh, Aaron Judge, if any of those guys came back to campus and gave us a couple minutes to shoot an interview, this is what I'd want to set up again. In the background here, you have a gray seamless. Similar to my garage here, it's a gray wall. But all I do is I take an RGB LED light, like the one back here, the same one actually, um, and I turn it to red and I point it at the background, whether that's paper, as it is in this instance, or whether that's a painted gray wall. Uh, that's the beauty about shooting into a gray wall. It usually will take on any color light you throw at it, which is really cool. Uh, the main key light is very similar to what I have here. It's a light panel Astra 6X bicolor LED one by one light shooting into a four by four styrofoam bounce board keying the subject. That was happening over here. Uh, and that kind of hits the chair and hits the subject right there as a key light. And the only thing that I don't have with me today is uh, a bounce. And that bounce would sit relatively close to my face as it did um, on November 10th here. And so I've got a little bit going on over here, which is kind of a kick light. The kick light I used um, in this instance is kind of in this region over here. That is a airy 150 watt hot light as a, we'll call it a kick. One of the cool things that I do enjoy using is something called an eye direct. An eye direct is something you put in front of the lens so the subject looks into the lens. It's very awkward if you try and say, hey, when you answer the questions, talk to the camera. Nine times out of 10, no one does that. And all the eye direct is, is a piece of glass and a mirror that Long story short, if you're looking into the lens, you're actually seeing the interviewer who's sitting right next to the camera. It's smoke and mirrors, essentially. This LED light lights the interviewer. 
so they illuminate into the eye direct. This uh, interview setup for Paul George was shot on a C100 Mark II um, with a Sigma 50 to 100 millimeter zoom lens set to 1.8. And it was nice that he wasn't moving. He was just sitting in a chair. You always want a chair that isn't on rollers. That's interview tip number one. Have the subject sit in a chair that does not have wheels or that doesn't swivel. And that's it. That's the interview setup. Paul George walks in. I hit record. Actually, right before Paul George walks in, you want to hit record because there is a moment at the beginning of this video where you actually capture the subject sitting down in the chair. And I use that in the edit. And it's kind of the little behind the scenes um, technique that uh, I've been known to use. And a lot of people use this technique. Record before they even sit down and then you have it as an editor. The more prepared you are on the front end will help you during production. So again, this room looked like this the day before Paul even got there. And when he walked in, we rolled. Nine minutes later, he walked out the door. When he walked out the door, that's when my B-roll begins. So I left this setup, took my Amira and my 20 to 120 lens and started running around the arena with Paul George. Essentially, he went into the locker room. I got some shots there. He went to a press conference. I captured that. Um, and then, of course, he had his jersey retirement ceremony at halftime of that basketball game. Um, and that's where the opening shot came from. I love, of course, backlight. And so I knew he was going to be walking from his seats at courtside to center court. I knew that there would be a giant spotlight on him. So I just kind of eyeballed where that spotlight was going to be and essentially put Paul George in between my lens and the spotlight. And that's where you can get that cool in and out of the shadows uh, effect, which is essentially how I opened this little video. That's what I'm constantly doing. I'm, I'm constantly looking for those little moments uh, that can help tell the story. It's a complete whirlwind. You're, you're going from an interview, you're running around the stadium, and before you know it, the day's over. And you get back to your computer to edit it, and you really hope you got enough stuff to make a video. If you found this valuable or have any more questions, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Um, until next time, I'm Dom, this is my garage and I'll see you in episode four.